Welcome to Cybersecurity Week. I'm your host, Sukanya Reghosh, Editor of Manufacturing Automation. In a special video chat today, we have with us Richard Peters, Chief Information Security Officer for Operational Technology at Fortinet. Rick brings the Fortinet OTCI team more than 37 years of cybersecurity and global partnering experience working across foreign, domestic, and commercial industry sectors at the National Security Agency. In his current role at Fortinet, he delivers cybersecurity defense solutions and insights for the ODICS SCADA critical infrastructure environments. Welcome, Rick. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, Sukanya. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Definitely. And uh, so Rick is here today to discuss ransomware and threat intelligence, a very important topic for all our listeners. Rick, let's talk about the headlines. Ransomware has been in the news with specific attacks impacting manufacturing. Why are industrial organizations like manufacturers such a rich target? Oh boy, what a great question. And yeah, it's been amplified, right? Over the last couple of years, we've certainly seen headlines. Um, yeah, some might argue exaggerated, but the reality is manufacturers specifically in the operational technology space in their IT enterprise and their OT environments have been targets. And you know, if you look under the microscope for a moment, what you'd realize is there's a lot that has changed in the landscape. The digital connectivity that exists today didn't exist a half decade, decade ago. Uh, so there are new opportunities for the bad actors or even structured organized nation state and, and criminal based activities to showcase their ability to disrupt. And during periods of great innovation and, and, and change, uh, that creates opportunity, right, for those uh, who are expert in that area to employ their tactics and tradecraft uh, to showcase their ability to disrupt um, and often to profit. Uh, I think if you were to look under the, under the line and, and determine what's really driving all of this, it's interest in gaining uh, intelligence, intellectual property, Often the, the, the real trademark, I'd say espionage is a big motivation in that space with a goal, of course, to achieve a profit from that. Uh, but in, in every instance, right, it's, it's the ability to leverage what has changed. And what has changed in operational technology, we're talking about a connected environment that historically was separated. Air gapped was the common term. You know, legacy hardware and software uh, frequently found in those spaces, 10, 20, even 30 years old. Uh, legacy vulnerabilities also there. So historic opportunities for someone who has uh, savvy in that space to gain access and then to profit from it. So we have to worry about that. And we have to worry about a lot of changes, right? Uh, the work from home initiatives that, that really hit the radar two years ago and can continue on today required great change to, to manage remote access and education of our very workforces and that are expected to accomplish those missions in a variety of new spaces, also quite challenging. And then last, I would say supply chain has become a huge area of, of, of concern. The risk in the relationships, typical manufacturers have dozens of trusted relationships. And as we know, again, through headlines, those have been uh, exploited as well to demonstrate how to get onto target and then how to accomplish um, the exfiltration of intellectual property. Right. So Fortinet recently published research that indicated the majority of respondents feel prepared and report having a strategy that includes employee cyber training, risk assessment plans, offline backups, and cybersecurity ransomware insurance. So, but despite these plans, two-thirds also claim to have been the victim of at least one ransomware attack. Rick, is it fair to say an organization should operate from the point of view that they have already been breached? Uh, it's a great point. In fact, I, I advocate that position, uh, not because you know we want to confess that we're vulnerable. Uh, I think what we've learned over time is that regardless of the level of effort you put into it, you've always got the human factor, the insider issue that you have to wrestle with. And as we just talked about, there are evolving landscapes, threat attack surfaces that are opportun opportunities, right, for exploitation to occur. 
Yeah, the good news is, right, as you pointed out at the top of the question, is response and readiness is becoming a paramount concern. So today, a well-thought-out risk assessment is a great place to start, right? You're seeing an engineering-based focus because you really have to have those who understand the environment very well. So that starts with characterizing the risk, understanding the associated vulnerabilities, then really taking a hard look at what is the likelihood of those exploitations, and more importantly, what's the consequence? And I think understanding the consequence then prepares you for understanding the impact and a great way to characterize that today in 2021, and a great illustration of that was the oil and gas situation here on the eastern coast of North America that happened not so very long ago. An illustration of the fact that the OT environment, while not principally attacked, was affected by an attack on the IT enterprise. So again, you've got a connected and a readiness issue. The ability to survive and sustain the operations was uh, caught under an IT enterprise attack. So again, you have to think beyond just the OT enterprise itself. So readiness means understanding the complete business equation, your processes, your personnel readiness, their level of ed education, and then the implementation of technology that's designed to achieve that level of readiness so that you have a response uh, process and an executed test plan that gives you a little bit more comfort, not perfect, however, but again, it allows you to pivot so that you can react and use a playbook approach uh, when that event occurs. Right. So what role does threat intelligence play in a cybersecurity strategy? Wow. Uh, so I'm a big threat intelligence guy. I've lived my life in that space. Uh, one of the things that excites me about where we're going, and I was having a conversation with a colleague this morning on this very topic, the importance and the relevance of actionable intelligence in the industrial control space something that's relatively new. You know, you're expecting the operational technology leaders who kind of have had it their way and have a different value system, right? It's always about safe and available operations. You know, the typical metrics you think about in IT don't necessarily align for OT. So you have to be aware of that. But when we can bring the design of security into the OT environment, we focus on a couple of things, you know, Transparency, that, that is, we don't bring latency into the equation, but we if we can bring an actionable intelligence behavioral analysis into that environment, it gives us a chance to prosecute uh, hundreds of billions of activities in a day and, and inform an ecosystem. And I'll, I'll call the environment itself an ecosystem. Fortinet likes to approach the problem solving, thinking about a security fabric and thinking about an ecosystem. That lets you prosecute you know, a billion of security events a day and keep your infrastructure. If you're using next generation firewalls out there, driving the policy, I can keep those all up to date. And I'm back ending that with intelligence, with application control signatures, IPS signatures that are all ICS correlated. So you, you start to raise the confidence, right? I like to think visibility into the threat landscape by, by leveraging actionable intelligence, a huge jump, right? Because it, it makes us more proactive in our defense instead of reactive. And in operational technology, that's a gigantic leap because it, it saves us time and money because we, we are can pivot at the speed of business and, and you can might say, uh, attempt to outmaneuver the adversary by neutralizing their threat and containing them. So there's a lot at play, the stakes are high and the operational technology owners know that. Right. So what type of framework should an organization leverage for building a cybersecurity strategy that includes preparation, response, and remediation? So, you know, I'm a big fan of, of the adoption of a security framework. Yeah. Um, you know, I like the NIST cybersecurity framework, but it, it's one of many. Um, you know, IEC 62443 provides insights on that. Now, the, the other industries of OT have lots of versions. I say pick one. Follow that, be consistent with it. It allows you to then uh, not just adopt it, but think about what it means to model cybersecurity best practices into your environment because it breaks it down, right? So if you think about uh, your environment as needing to be protected 360 degrees, you can think about the identification, protection, detection, response, and recovery components of that entire life cycle. What you're really trying to achieve is a continuous trust assessment. And by diving deeper in, it allows you to do your own self-inspection 
and mature your own environment. Yeah, you can adopt great cyber hygiene, but there may be gaps in what you're trying to accomplish. It lets you address visibility or address uh, segmentation if that's uh, where you're not quite as re resilient or robust as you need to be. But it, it lets you do that thoughtfully and methodically so you get the better return on investment, but it allows you to mature over time and reach a point where you indeed can feel confident about the integrity of your environment and as the owner, if I, what keeps me up at night is not understanding moment by moment, the level of integrity and understanding of any behavior, malicious or otherwise, that's going on in my environment that I'm treating and neutralizing uh, and then reporting on, because that's, that's the ultimate goal there. Right. So how can Fortinet help manufacturing organizations secure their operational technology and IT systems? So it really starts with a, uh, with a thoughtful breakdown. We talked about a framework already, but then the adoption of, uh, of what Fortinet espouses, their security fabric for operational technology is a great place to start. You know, it, it provides the ability to think about all of those domains with component solutions that provide uh, an opportunity to consider what Fortinet may have to offer, as well as our partners. We have a technology alliance, a fabric ready technology alliance. It's very extensive, over 400 partners. So as we take a, and examine the, the climate and the environment, we can consider what point solutions are already in play. I think that's very important, right? It's not, hey, we're going to rip and replace everything. It's a consideration, a thoughtful consideration about what you're already doing. And I think a couple of underlying themes happen as you're working through that process. You start to really focus on understanding what assets within your environment are most important. Is it the physical plant? Is it the intellectual property? Understanding where those assets lie, the data that which is, by the way, the commodity of greatest interest today is what we're really trying to protect. And that, that intellectual property may be your crown jewels, your recipes, those things you do that right separate you from your competition. So building visibility, control, and all those behavioral analysis and automated processes and gives you a sense of not ready, just readiness, but a sense of being able to pivot in a moment, thinking inside out, if you will, right? It's not just focusing on hardening the edge, but actually protecting by understanding what's happening across the OT stack. So regardless of what layer I'm at, I've provided a way to contain and control the adversary once they pop onto the radar, so to speak, and then be able to neutralize them so I, I minimize the impact and I sustain a safe operation, which is paramount. What investments are Fortinet making to prepare current teams and the next generation workforce to support cybersecurity initiatives? So that starts with education. Uh, right. One of the things that uh, uh, I've been proudest of in, in our endeavor is the fact that we have a program, our NSE curriculum, and the NSC curriculum is a, is a stack that starts you at the basic values and takes you all the way through the deeper uh, levels of inspection and understanding. And I think it's up to industry. We, we're hearing more and more about the, the need to share intelligence, to share thoughtful learning. This is our second year of being all in in that space. So the NSC training initiative is a great example of raising the bar for our customers, for our partners, anyone who's interested in the business. Because if we're gonna succeed in this, we have to succeed collaboratively. Partnership is the key. I talked about it before with the ecosystem approach. Again, it's an endeavor where everyone's in it to win it. Call it the coalition of the willing, if you will. But by raising the stakes with education, uh, we can help a company who has a very large uh, uh, array of, of subject matter experts uh, pivot from maybe being a liability moment by moment, because we know that ransomware attacks, phishing attacks are successful. By helping to lay, raise the bar there and, and levels of awareness, we can position and you know, pivot that, that workforce to being an asset. And that's a part of how you solve the problem, right? Because it's not just technology. It's the people. It's understanding your business processes and the technology. Together, that's how you succeed. So uh, the next question is, where is Fortinet invested in Canada? Wow. So the good news is uh, we're very well positioned in North America and specifically in Canada. Today, you have offices in Burnaby, British Columbia and Ottawa. You know, there are significant hubs. I think what attracted me to Fortinet early on is a, really an engineering organization. You know, take a look at the patent wall and it's impressive. It showcases our commitment to cutting edge technology 
and evidence that you just, it's undeniable. So when you look at the significant hubs for R&D and threat research that's in Burnaby, it's, and that's where our FortiGuard Labs function, which I talked about before with actionable intelligence and reporting, that's where that technology support lies. You know, almost 1800 plus employees working across Canada alone really yields a number one uh, market share in revenue and, and units ship. That's gigantic. Uh, IDC in, in Q2 reported that. So it's, you know, we're in a position where we're continuing to grow and operational technology is one of those spaces. We're seeing gigantic leaps and because it's an important problem to solve. You know, it's got the front page headlines for sure, but I think it's got the imperative of the executive as well. And Fortinet is positioned as, as one of the top leading companies. We're in the 10 best tech companies to work for in Canada. So it's an exciting place to be. It's an enriching place to be. It's a rewarding place to be because we're indeed making a difference. So before we end this chat, uh, I just want to uh, ask one last question. That is, uh, what, what last words or what advice would you want to leave the listeners with? Wow, what a great question. I'm often asked that, 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 that point. And, and I say, you know, it, it starts with a recognition that we have to own it together. I've talked about partnerships and the endeavor of working collaboratively as being important. You're seeing it at the national levels right now. That's going to be a slow moving uh, a train because those kind of changes take a while. But I think the imperative, right, is starting out with what I talked about before, really focusing on your own assets, understanding your industry and your infrastructure better than anyone else because your adversary does. They're focusing on how to get on target and they're succeeding. They're accomplishing periods of reconnaissance. So while you may not believe they understand you very well, you can trust that they do. And so your ability to defend uh, and be proactive is gigantic. That again, that starts with a commitment to working uh, across the entire landscape starting with that framework we talked about before, and then being committed to cybersecurity maturity as a journey, because it's not a, it's not a tactical decision, it's a sequence of decisions that you build on to achieve a level of resilience that, that not just gives you confidence, but gives you data that reflects that, in fact, you are resilient because you have all the metrics that showcase how you're neutralizing the threats, and that information then can be shared, and then you gain not just the corporate and, uh, indulgement in, in the fact that we are in fact seeing a return on investment, but greater interest in, in, in moving that, that needle even further. That's the, that's the longstanding commitment because operational technology solutions have to survive over the long haul. Great. Thank you so much, Rick, for joining us for this uh, incredibly informative uh, video chat. And thank you for being a part of Cybersecurity Week. I believe uh, this topic is going to be relevant beyond this week and it's going to be relevant throughout the year. So hope our listeners uh, have uh, you know, been able to learn something uh, interesting from this. It's been such a pleasure, Sukanya. Thank you.